Are wearables protecting your privacy? We reviewed 17 brands to find out. Like most people, when you bought your smartwatch or fitness tracker, you probably accepted the terms of use and privacy policy without much thought. Most people do. But the reality is that these devices capture a huge amount of really sensitive data, things like your heart rate, your sleep patterns, your location, your fitness level, and even your menstrual cycle. In 2024, over 500 million wearable devices were shipped globally. Every one of these devices has the potential of opening a window into users' most personal data. So what exactly are we agreeing to when we click past those privacy policies? To find out, our research team analysed the privacy policies of 17 major wearable device companies. To do this, we developed an evaluation framework, a scorecard of how these companies manage your data. This scorecard had seven key categories related to things like whether governments or third parties could access your data, if there was a way to report a vulnerability in their platform, or if there was a process for them to report a data breach. It basically gave us a way to see if the companies followed best practices when it came to managing user data. You'll have to read the paper for the full detail, but what we found was pretty shocking. 14 of the 17 companies we evaluated didn't say if governments or third parties could request or had requested access to your data, and most didn't describe a vulnerability disclosure program. Think of a wearable company like a castle. If someone spots a gap in the castle's defences, you'd hope there's a clear way to warn the guards. A formal way for researchers or users to report security flaws before they're exploited. But in most cases, that system didn't exist, or at least it wasn't mentioned anywhere in the company's policies. Even more concerning was the fact that most companies didn't clearly outline what they would do if there was a breach, if your data got out. Only 41% had strong breach notification processes in place, which means that if your health data was stolen, you might not even hear about it in time to do anything. That final stat is particularly concerning with the rise of data breaches globally. The faster users are notified, the more they can limit the damage. You see, data breaches are becoming more frequent and they're increasingly targeted. According to IBM's 2024 cost of a data breach report, health and tech industry records are among the most valuable kinds of data. A 2021 Trustwave report found that healthcare records sell for up to $250 per record. Compare that to just $540 for a payment card and you get an idea of their relative value. You see, to a bad actor, wearable data is gold. Unlike a password or a credit card number, biometric data can't be changed. It's permanent, intimate, and highly revealing. It can be used to infer your identity, your habits, your vulnerabilities. And once it's out, you can't pull it back. That's what makes wearable data so attractive to hackers, insurers, and even state actors. In 2021, the largest wearable data breach to date occurred. Health data from 61 million users of Fitbit and Apple was leaked, including names, birth dates, and location data. But the breach wasn't caused by those companies directly. It was a third-party platform called GetHealth. Their database wasn't password protected and the data wasn't encrypted. With so many wearable companies lacking vulnerability disclosure programs or strong breach protocols, who's to say they won't be the source of the next major leak? The growing vulnerability begs the question, how seriously do wearable companies actually take your privacy? To answer that, we sorted all 17 companies into three groups, top, middle, and low performers. There were just two top performers, Apple and Google. They scored well across most categories and had relatively clear policies with decent safeguards. Brands like Coros, Fossil, Aura, Fitbit, Withings, Polar, Garmin, and Samsung were mid-tier performers. These had moderate to low risk scores and mostly followed privacy best practices, though there were definitely areas for improvement. The low performers were Suntu, Wahoo, Wise, Huawei, Xiaomi, Whoop, and UltraHuman. These companies often lacked transparency, had weaker breach notification protocols, and gave users less control over how their data is used, shared, or retained. Basically, according to the wording of their policies, you could argue whether the data you gather is even yours once these companies get their hands on it. But a key issue here is that policy doesn't always equal practice. What companies say they do might not match what they actually do. Take Apple and Google. Like I said, they scored highest in our evaluation but Apple paid $95 million in 2025 after it was revealed that Siri was recording people without their consent. And in 2022, Google settled the case for over $390 million for tracking users even after they'd turned off location history. And it's not just the big names. A 2023 industry review found that 98% of organizations had a relationship with at least one third party vendor 
that experienced a data breach in the past two years. Now, why does this matter for wearables? Because nine out of the 17 companies we studied share consumer data with third parties for various reasons. All it takes is one breach from one vendor and your data is exposed, whether or not you ever agreed to it. Now, if this concerns you and you're unsure what to do, start here. Review the privacy policy of the device you use. Yes, it might take some time, but you deserve to know what data is being collected and how it's being used. And if you want to see how your brand stacks up, we've graded all 17 companies in the article linked below. Do you think wearable companies need stricter rules to protect your data? Let us know in the comments. And if this made you think twice about your own device, share it with someone who needs to see it.